story ultimately needs to have a point. And this is the difference between that relative who goes on and on and on, even about maybe exciting experiences, but it doesn't go anywhere because it doesn't have a point. That regardless of what your perspective might be spiritually or religious, to love one's enemy is maybe perhaps uh, the hardest thing to figure out how to do uh, in one's life. Stories were a way to create meaning out of our experiences. And we did that by giving it a beginning, a middle, and an end. First something happened, then something else happened, and as a result of that, we know this. Those are the key elements that you, you have to have in a story. And what I find most often I'm working with people is that, and because of that, it's the moral of the story, it's the point of the story, it's the lesson of the story, Thank you. it's the reason to be told. So right now, across the country, small towns everywhere there are teenagers engaged in a war it's a war against boredom with the eye when we're reading we can follow details you can jump in and out of time in fact we delight with that because we've seen it and we remember it when you're reading a book you can go on one page and then you go back to the other page when you're reading an article in a newspaper you can who is that again and you go up and you check there's not a linear aspect really to the written word that's the beauty of it the oral tradition has to be linear. The ear cannot capture that. The ear cannot keep track of all those details. <laughs> it's funny because when you grow up in Memphis, a trip to Alaska, it's basically like traveling internationally. In fact, I'm pretty sure we packed our passports because my mom was convinced that it was possible that we could get stuck in Canada. <laughs> when we're listening to stories, what we're doing is we're adding up all the details, again, looking for a point. That's how our brain works. So with an oral story, you have to be far more strict than you would even with writing to only include the details that matter. What the ear does have is a capacity to interpret tone. It was like Republican or more Republican were kind of my two. It was like own a gun or carry a gun into McDonald's. I love telling tragic stories that make people laugh straight up tone. That's something that's much harder to do in writing. You need a whole lot more words to capture tone than you do in oral storytelling. That's why you can eliminate details. You can cut out big swaths of things because in the space of me saying, and then he walked in the room. Totally different than if you're reading it. You can't get that beep, 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 beep. That, that's where oral storytelling rises above and I think stakes its own place in the art form of storytelling and even even literature in that way. Maybe I can just not get a passport and then I won't have to leave. Okay, this is what we're gonna do. We're just not gonna get a passport. It's a great plan. 16 years old, it's a great plan. So that was ultimately what I wanted to do with Drunken Telegraph was to just establish a culture of storytelling. It's purely the practice of telling our stories, and I think even more listening to our stories, creating a space where it's fun to listen, and where you know that you're not gonna be stuck with that relative who never makes a point. You're gonna be talking with people who live in your community, and you're gonna hear a story that goes somewhere. Thank you.